Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Farm D and Me. Today we're going to be discussing a stroke and it's specifically acute ischemic stroke. Now as you'll remember back, this is <clears throat> the most common type of stroke, more common than the hemorrhagic stroke. And it's typically caused by a thrombus or an emboli. And these can be <clears throat> um, deriving from cerebral atherosclerosis, carotid atherosclerotic plaques, or they can be cardiogenic in nature. In order to diagnose these patients, time is really brain. So within 45 minutes of them hitting the ER, you want to have already interpreted the CT or MRI scan because agents uh, such as your TPA really are time dependent. What is um, another great tool is something developed by the National Institutes of Health called the Stroke Scale. And this looks at a variety of different things, their level of consciousness, um, it reviews uh, their facial palsy, their motor abilities, etc. And this is a really great tool to get a subjective uh, numerical value to assess and evaluate <clears throat> and document their progress. So what are some risk factors? Non-modifiable risk factors include being of the male gender and African-American descent. Modifiable risk factors include things like hypertension, AFib, atherosclerosis, diabetes, smoking, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as dyslipidemia. Oh, sorry. Okay, so your patient comes in, they've had an acute ischemic stroke. Um, the main things you want to do, your goals of therapy, are to maintain cerebral perfusion pressure to the ischemic area, um, maintain a normal intracranial pressure, um, control the blood pressure, and then, of course, get rid of the clot. So, um, first, before we talk about our complementary therapies, I want to talk a little bit about our alteplase, our clot-busting drugs. So the way that this drug works, so I've got a um, mechanism of action slide here I pulled off the cath flow website actually, is um, your alteplase, which is a recombinant tissue plasminogen activator, binds directly to the fibrin in the thrombus. This um, activates the plasminogen to convert to plasmin, which dissolves the fibrin and breaks up the clot. So how do you dose this? As a pharmacist, you really need to know how to dose this agent, and what you want to do is you want to provide 0.9 milligrams per kilogram with a max dose of 90 milligrams, IV over 60 minutes, and you're going to give 10% of dose as a bolus over 1 minute. Um, something to be aware of, you want to make sure the blood pressure is not too high when you give this agent. Typically, we aim for blood pressure less than 185 over 110. Um, however, as I'll talk to you a little bit later, you really don't want to aggressively target blood pressure at this point. You want to wait until seven days after their stroke. All right, so um, how far out can you give TPA from the onset of symptoms? So the FDA says three hours. And if you look at your guidelines, they say 4.5 hours from symptom onset. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to list the times when you want to stick to the three hour limit. Anytime a patient is um, greater than 80, if they're using an oral anticoagulant, they have a score greater than 25 on the NIHSS which I just uh, alluded to earlier, or they have a history of diabetes and stroke, you really don't want to push it out to that four and a half um, hour limit because you're starting to increase your risk in decreasing your benefits. So contraindications to this agent, um, basically anything that puts patient at risk for bleeds. So if your patient has an active bleed, if they have a platelet count less than 100,000, um, any sort of um, elevated lab test such as APPTT and they're on some sort of blood thinner such as a direct thrombin inhibitor or a direct factor 10A or heparin, 
really need to seriously consider, is this going to be beneficial to my patient or not? Side effects. Uh, major bleeding, of course. Hypotension. And angioedema. This agent also comes with heavy monitoring, so you want to do neurological assessments and blood pressure checks every 15 minutes for the first two hours. You're going to bump it down to every 30 minutes for six hours. And then every one hour until 24 hours after treatment. You're also going to want to get a follow-up head CT scan 24 hours before you start any sort of anticoagulant or antiplatelet to ensure you don't have a bleed. Um, and of course, if your patient is showing a sign of a bleed, such as a severe headache, acute hypertension, um, you want to discontinue this infusion. <clears throat> All right, so complementary therapies. Um, they recommend aspirin, 325, um, within 24 to 48 hours after stroke onset. Um, and this is not to alter the neurological outcomes or to really improve anything with this current stroke, but the reason we give it is to prevent recurrent strokes. Um, I also wanted to mention DVT prevention. Um, so a lot of times um, physicians and other providers, of course, I want to give them something for this because they're going to be sitting a lot usually, um, immobile essentially. Um, but just up Q anticoagulants until 24 hours after TPA. Because again, we don't want to put them at risk for a bleed. All right, so secondary prevention. This depends on whether their um, stroke was cardioembolic in origin or non-cardioembolic. If it's cardioembolic, you're going to use anticoagulant therapy, so things like your warfarin, your apixaban, etc. Um, that is a whole other beast that we're going to cover in another video. Today we're going to be discussing antiplatelets which are used for non-cardioembolic strokes. All right, so <clears throat> our antiplatelet therapies are as such. And make sure that's centered. Um, I want to go over the mechanism of action as well as things that we should know as pharmacists. So how does aspirin work? Well, we all know it binds irreversibly to our COX-1 and 2 inhibitors, and when that happens, you get a decrease in prostaglandin as well as a decrease in this, thromboxane A2. This thromboxane is a potent vasoconstrictor and facilitates platelet aggregation, so when you inhibit, you have less platelet aggregation. So you're going to dose this at 50 to 325 milligrams daily. Contraindications to use include uh, NSAID or a salicylate allergy as well as asthma. As far as warnings go, um, there is an increased risk of bleeds and renal impairment. Monitoring parameters include to check for bleeding and bruising. So I think we're all fairly familiar with aspirin already. So we're going to jump on to the Agronox, which is a diprotamol um, extended release with aspirin. So this agent works by inhibiting phosphodiesterase, and this results in an accumulation of aden adenosine and um, an increase in the cyclic AMP. When you get this, um, you get platelet aggregation inhibition. So again, decreasing your risk of future strokes. This agent is dosed one capsule, which is 200 milligrams of the diprotamol with 25 um, of the aspirin. 
twice a day. Also, be sure to keep it in original container. So contraindications to use, um, same as the aspirin. Um, warnings to be aware of, they didn't really have any um, that I want to discuss. Um, monitoring parameters, or excuse me, side effects. So this one to be aware of is headache. And this happens in more than 10% of patients. Um, so definitely be aware of that one. It can also cause some dyspepsia, abdominal pain, um, nausea, diarrhea, things like that. Um, now, monitoring parameters. Um, you want to look for signs and symptoms of bleeding. And you want to get your hemoglobin and hematocrit uh, checked as needed. All right, clopidogrel or Plavix, probably one of our most common agents for uh, stroke prevention. This agent works by inhibiting um, P2Y12 ADP mediated platelet activation and aggregation. Um, so you're inhibiting this, you're not getting the activation of these receptors downstream, and you're essentially inhibiting thrombus formation again. So this agent is dosed as 75 milligrams daily. Um, contraindications to use include um, active pathological bleed. So if they have uh, something like peptic ulcer disease, um, things like that. However, something good to remember about this agent is um, I'm just going to write it down here, is good for patients with aspirin allergies. So that's something to remember, especially as a pharmacist. Alright, warnings for use. Um, it does have a boxed warning. And that is, um, so Plavix is a prodrug, so in order to be metabolized, it counts on CYP2C19. Um, so if you have two CYP, uh, like a genetic inhibition, or if you're taking t um, 2C19 inhibitors, um, things like omeprazole, ezomeprazole, um, that's going to decrease its ability to um, be converted from prodrug to active drug. So none of these do not use. Another, um, um, another warning about this one is discontinue five days prior to surgery. And thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, TTP, um, is a possibility and has been reported. All right, so, <clears throat> so let's see, side effects to be aware of. There weren't any want to discuss, but I did want to discuss some monitoring parameters, and these are signs and symptoms of bleeding, um, as well as the hemoglobin in the hematocrit, so similar to the agonox. All right, so the ticlopidine. This agent is dosed, let's see here, um, 250 milligrams twice a day with food. Um, it does have a box warning as well for life-threatening hematologic reactions. And due to this, we don't really use it much, um, if at all, really. Um, so for side effects to be aware of, um, not really recommended, like I said, by the American Heart Association, um, because not only do the box warnings, it can cause um, increased triglycerides. Um, it can cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. It can cause neutropenia etc. So a lot of side effects. Um, I really just use this agent kind of as a last line type of thing. 
Um, monitoring, you want to get a complete blood cell count every two weeks for the first three months. All right, um, and then as the patient is discharged and they go back out home, again, like I mentioned, you want to treat that hypertension, um, but you want to wait till that seven day mark. And then if you'll remember back to our dyslipidemia video, this patient has had an event, so they are now a candidate for a high intensity statin. All right, so that covers it. Thanks for watching part one of Stroke about acute ischemic stroke. Bye bye.